Welcome to my overview series, Work Smarter, Not Harder. In this episode, I'll explain the basic differences between three of Adobe's most popular programs, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. I'll also tell you how most people use these programs versus how they should be using these programs. So let's get started. As an Adobe trainer and instructor, I've gotten very accustomed to hearing people tell me that they don't really know what the differences are between Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. And that's not unreasonable, especially when you're first starting out with these programs. I know that when I first encountered Photoshop way back in the day, I couldn't even figure out how to create a circle. So I put Photoshop aside and went back to my familiar Corel Draw and my easy perfect circles. Fast forward a few years and the digital age had its big bang moment with the release of Windows 95 and its enhanced multimedia capabilities. This new technology with its wide ranging support for audio and video programs facilitated the growth of digital media content creation and consumption. It was at that point that I realized my confusion. I had wanted to use Photoshop as a drawing program, but it was designed to excel at digital image editing. But when I was trying to use it, there were very few digital images available to edit. Now I know that what I should have been using was Illustrator because it was the program specifically designed to excel at vector drawing. And if document layout is a necessary part of your work, InDesign completes the trio by excelling at that task. Now over the years, each one of these dedicated programs has evolved and expanded to where there's more and more overlap between the program's capabilities, but they still work best when used as they were intended to be used, as a team. But that is often not what happens because people are people and people usually have favorites. And Photoshop is the most favorite of the favorites. So if you're a Photoshop user, you'll often try to do all of your tasks in Photoshop. The same is true for Illustrator users and to a lesser extent with InDesign users. But the best way to use these programs is together as an integrated toolkit that can be used to make your tasks easier and your workflow more efficient. Unfortunately, most of the people who use these programs together do it by the file place pieces method or more often by the copy and paste pieces method. So what does that even mean? To help explain, I'll give you a common example, and that is the need for seasonal flyers. So when a business needs to have seasonal flyers, the graphic designer will typically create and export separate images from Photoshop and create and export separate logos from Illustrator to go into separate InDesign documents. As you can see, that is a lot of separate files to keep up with. A better, more efficient option is to create layered files in Photoshop and Illustrator and place those into InDesign. But how do you use the separate layers if you put the whole file in? Well, the key to that is twofold. The first key is show import options. When you place a file, say from Photoshop into InDesign, there's a button at the bottom of the window that says show options. Most people just ignore that button, but it is the key to placing layered files. So go ahead and push it. When you do, you'll see several checkboxes. By default, the replace selected item is checked. Go ahead and also select the show import options checkbox. Then when you open the file, you'll see the image import options dialog box where you can pick which layers you want to show. In this example, I have three choices, the original image and two color lookup adjustment layer options. So that is how you can use a layered file when you're first placing it. But what happens if you wanna change the layer visibility options on a placed file? Well, that's the second key. In this example, I have two seasonal flyers for Polly's plants in one InDesign document. After placing one instance of the Photoshop images file, and one instance of the Illustrator logos file, I copied and arranged these instances in my InDesign template. Once that's done, I can click on each file instance and go to the object, object layer options to select which file layer I want to display for each image or logo placeholder. And presto, I now have exactly what I want and it only involved two additional files, not eight. 
And that is only one way that you can use the integrated team power of these programs to simplify and streamline your workflows. If you would like an in-depth tutorial on this episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder, or need help with general or specific issues, please contact us at Digital Helpmates. Thanks for watching.